I coined this thing called the cognitive light cone, which is basically the boundary of the self. It's meant to be the, the thing that distinguishes a self from the outside world. And what it is, is the scale of the largest goal you can pursue. So again, not the range of your senses, not the reach of your effectors, but the size of the largest goal state you can remember and you can pursue. So in single cells, they have tiny little goals. They have short memories, short um, uh, anticipatory power in the future. And their goals are things like this, like pH. They're scalars, they're single numbers about things like pH within the cell. But when they get together into networks, that network, elect, that electrical network, allows them to store grandiose goals. Here's a sal an axolotl. These amphibians regenerate most of their body parts, including their limbs, their eyes, their jaws, their spinal cords, and so on. And if you were to amputate anywhere along this, the plane of this limb, these cells would immediately sense that they've been taken away from their goal. They would work really hard to rebuild. And when they get there, they would stop. But this whole thing is not just about damage. It's not about um, just fixing this kind of surgical defect. Um, it, it also allows you to do these amazing things. So here's a tadpole that we made. What you'll notice is uh, there's no eyes where the eyes belong, but instead, so, so here are the nostrils, here's the mouth, here's the brain, the gut. There's no eyes, but we put an eye on its tail. And it's a whole story I could tell you about how, how we do it. But what happens with this, with this eye is that it makes an optic nerve. That optic nerve does not go to the brain. It synapses on the spinal cord or sometimes on the gut, sometimes nowhere at all. And the most amazing thing about it is that these animals can see. And we know because we built this device that trains them for visual um, uh, learning tasks and they, they can see perfectly well. This is shocking. Uh, wh why does it not take additional rounds of mutation and selection to radically change this animal's sensory motor architecture and make things work? And it works out of the box because that process where all of the cells, every single time, you can, you can call it beginner's mind, where every single time they have to solve the problem of what, what, what are we, and what are we going to build, and where are we going to go? It is, it is never obvious to them or assumed that they are what they are, okay? The story that the genetics tells you what you're going to be is not the, the right story at all. Instead, what the genetics builds is a problem-solving agent that is very creative in interpreting its environment and interpreting the genetics that have been passed down to it. And so that's why, and I could, I could do hours on, on just examples of uh, creative problem solving where, where you don't need additional rounds of mutation because the material never thought it was going to be a perfect tadpole in the first place, right? It, it, it's able to adapt to all kinds of uh, novel manipulations.